Hi, welcome back everyone. Today I am going to discuss an interesting concept of flare vascular hyperintensity in acute stroke, whether it is good or bad. So let us see with the classic example of a case and its importance. And I would like to thank Dr. Srinivas Dhanamudi sir for providing the classic case. So let us see what it is. So the fluid attenuation inversion recovery sequence that is the flare vascular hyperintensity is observed in stroke patients after intracranial large arterial occlusion. So what are they portending to? Is it a good or a bad prognosis? Let us see with the classic case. So this is an elderly male stroke patient who has come with acute onset of right hemiplegia. And here you can see the flare hyperintensities in the left insular cortex and frontal lobe. You can see the same in the diffusion restriction. And you can see a large cutoff of left MCA. You can see the abrupt large arterial occlusion on left side. And the important finding which I am going to concentrate today is the flare vascular hyperintensity. You can see here, you can see the vessels are hyperintense on flare and which is even beyond the restriction area. So let us see what is it. <clears throat> What is flare vascular hyperintensity? It is defined as a focal tubular serpentine hyperintensities in the subarachnoid space relative to CSF and corresponding to typical arterial course. So it can be either proximal FVH or distal FVH. So the proximal FVH includes M1 and M2 segments and the distal FVH includes M3 and the distal segments. So what does it indicate? FVH distal to the severe vascular occlusion which could be due to the reversed slow and static flow in the leptomeningeal circulation. It indicates a retrograde leptomeningeal collaterals. And it is also a surrogate marker for diffusion perfusion mismatch. It indicates there is some amount of mismatch going on. In MCA infarcts, the presence of flare vascular hyperintensity is associated with unfavorable outcome within 6 hours to 14 days of onset of hemiplegia or a stroke symptom. And the wider distribution of distal FVH beyond 14 days has a favorable outcome. We need to rem remember this. The distal FVH beyond 14 days has a good outcome because there is a maintained leptomeningeal circulation to the region of infarct. And one more important thing which we are going to discuss about in our case is the flare vascular hyperintensity and diffusion mismatch. It represents the peripheral blood supply to the infarct is still maintained. So this is the mismatch which has seen even in our case. I will be coming back to that. And the patients who do not receive the reperfusion therapy and those with flare vascular hyperintensity are more likely to have unfavorable outcome. So remember this, the presence of flare vascular hyperintensity and who are not going to receive the reperfusion therapy, it's going to be an unfavorable or it's going to be a poor prognosis to the patient. So let us see our case. So in our case, you can see the flare vascular hyperintensity, which is more distal to the region of, in fact, you can see here the restricted diffusion and you can see the flare vascular hyperintensity at this location, which is beyond the area of restriction, which indicates flare vascular hyperintensity mismatch. So in the presence of large arterial occlusion, presence of flare vascular hyperintensity within 6 hours to 14 days of onset indicates a poor prognosis. So the patient has to be so it's, uh, treated with the reperfusion therapy. So always it's better to mention this important sign that is the flare vascular hyperintensity which indicates a prognosis as well. So try to mention this in the report as well so that it indicates the clinician that the patient might have a good outcome once the reperfusion therapy is instituted. So kindly go back to these few articles uh, which explain the concept where the various studies have been uh, done with the help of this flare vascular hyperintensities which give an overall idea of about this FVH. Thank you all.